Tuesday, March 1st, 2022, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So the reset towards hard assets, towards precious metals continues. We're going to look today at the year to date uh, numbers again. We did that over a week ago on a, on a weekend video. Before I start, though, I'd like to thank all of you again uh, for your interest in the channel, for your support. We've, we've gone through another month, month of February, and we start another one. We're approaching 60,000 subscribers. It's not something uh, I emphasize too much. I don't really uh, care too much about the numbers. What I care is trying to inform the public with good information, uh, with my opinion on not just market, but monetary geopolitical <laughs> events. We're going to skip that today. And uh, yeah, just look at uh, what's happening. And uh, yeah, thanks again. So the rebalancing. Yeah, as I said, I spoke about this on February 20th. It was a Saturday video, I think, or a Sunday video, major shift from paper, a uh, paper assets to hard assets so far in 2022. And I think uh, this is uh, something that will take years to, to uh, materialize because we've had such a, a big uh, growth or, or yeah, in, in financialization, uh, the economies of the West uh, have become too, too uh, based on financialization, too, too much uh, debt, credit, spending, outsourcing uh, of all our uh, manufacturing production. And we focused on, we've been focusing on borrowing, spending services, wars, uh, deficit spending by governments, deficit spending by individuals, by corporations. And uh, am I blaming anyone for this? No, it's just the way of the markets and policy has been set for probably about 40 years. We, we've had uh, a never decreasing uh, uh, interest rate, if you look at the 10 year yields, We've had uh, capital do really well because it's really cheap to borrow capital. So, and also the big corporations have done very well. If you had asked someone about 10 years ago that we'd have companies that are worth more than a trillion dollars, people would have been probably a little bit skeptical. So uh, we've uh, eviscerated the middle class in the West. And, and why is that? Well, because the big corporations, the pri big private equity people, the, uh, the financial oligarchy in the West, and I'm going to use that term oligarchy because it's bandied a around <laughs> a lot for other countries. Why not the, uh, the Western uh, banking, central banking, uh, Wall Street city of London oligarchy? Uh, they've benefited a lot and they... Uh, Yes, the big corporations have benefited. Labor uh, has not benefited from it. People, the average working person hasn't because there's been a lot of automation, a, a lot of outsourcing. And I think everything that's happening socially, geopolitically right now, uh, and also to do with the crisis of the last two years, it's all to do with this. And, and I think this is all shifting. It's very difficult to know exactly what's going to happen in the next 10 years in terms of the overall picture. But one thing I'm uh, pretty much convinced about is this shift from paper assets, be it uh, stocks and bonds, private equity, maybe even a little bit of real estate. The real estate is different, but I, I still think the valuations are highly uh, you know, yeah, they're highly overvalued, the uh, uh, real estate. And we're going to shift more to real things. We, we're going to have to focus more on real things, on producing. Uh, yes, the whole 
globalization uh, scheme is probably un not unraveling, but it's uh, really changing. And I think countries uh, and nations are going to have to be more self-sufficient. But I think that's going to work uh, naturally. And, and by naturally, I mean, uh, I think the price of uh, capital or the cost of borrowing is going to do that. So what we're going to do now is look at some uh, year-to-date numbers that we looked uh, about uh, 10 days ago and uh, to see, to show you how this is continuing. And I think it started um, probably towards the end of last year, even though commodities haven't, have been doing quite well for the last year and a half. Uh, we've seen the uh, relative outperformance of commodities versus uh, paper assets start yeah maybe towards the end of last year so let's get on with it uh let's start first look at the major paper assets uh the stock market so the dow year to date at the end of uh february or yesterday was down 6.73 percent s p 500 down 8.23 percent and uh the index that has led uh, this paper rush uh, the Nasdaq was down 12.1%. So now we're going to look at gold and silver. And why gold and silver? Well, because I think uh, ultimately and eventually when we have the reset, the rebalancing of the scales from paper towards more real things, uh, we will see uh, the Dow gold ratio be very much I would say near one, maybe even go past one this time. So I'm using the GLD because the GLD uh, settles, it closes, uh, and uh, spot gold trades 24-7. So uh, year to date, as of yesterday, uh, GLD was up 5.97%, so almost 6%. Is this uh, encouragement for people to buy GLD? No. Uh, we uh, we think buying physical gold and silver is the only way uh, for the way we think that we need to be self-sufficient and, and not finance the bankers. Anyway, uh, SLV, same reason I'm looking at SLV. SLV. So silver is up 6.8% uh, year to date as of yesterday. So silver was underperforming i think 10 days ago when i did i looked at these similar kind of data year to date data so now silver is outperforming uh gold it's up 6.8 gold was up just under six and now we're going to look at the mining stocks so we're going to look at gdx uh gdx is up 10 percent 10.02 year to date uh gdxj that's still underperforming a, a bit, but it's up 5.12% year to date. And uh, now I'm going to look at TLT, which is uh, the uh, iShares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF. So that gives you an idea of how the bond markets are doing. And year to date, that's down 3.07%. Uh, caveat here uh, i would say that it looks like the bond market right now especially with what happened yesterday to the bond market and what happened yesterday well as you can see here uh bond yields drop quite quite a lot in one day like the 10-year dropped 15 basis points the two-year dropped almost 13 basis points that's not normal and uh, I think what's happening here is a shift. I think uh, bond investors expect the Fed to actually <laughs> stop tightening even before they tighten. Does that mean the uh, shift away from paper assets and bonds is over? No, this is just a short term move, I think. And it's going to drive, uh, I think, commodities even higher because it means the Fed is probably going to accommodate uh, or not not tighten so that's uh, the caveat here uh, I'm also looking here at the uh, Invesco Bloomberg commodity ETF and that's doing really well I think uh, when I did my video 10 days ago it was up about 
nine or ten percent as you can see here year to date now that in uh, ETF is up almost 16 percent 15.86 percent and uh, to all those who focus on the dollar index and the dollar index is a measure of a fiat currency the dollar versus other rubbish crappy fiat currencies uh, but we'll have a look at what it's doing year to date well it's up 0.73 percent year to date as i've said many times uh, gold and silver will outperform all fiat currencies <laughs> and it shows um, to finish off <laughs> So people don't say, wow, you didn't look at Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin year to date. I know Bitcoin trades 24 seven. Right now it's telling me uh, year to date, Bitcoin is down 8.887%. So it looks like Bitcoin is not a hard asset. It's a paper speculative, speculative asset. And it, it seems to be tracking the NASDAQ uh, and I know it's gone up quite a bit in the last 24 hours. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 10 to 9 a.m. Uh, and Billy and I got wet this morning as well. It's rainy uh, this morning, not too hard, just a drizzle. And that's the thing about England. If you uh, let the weather dictate your life, you, you don't do much. So spot gold this morning 1913.50 right now up four and a half dollars or a quarter of a percent range has been 14 uh, 1914.50 to 1901 that 1920 level is still an important resistance the long-term charts still look very good i, I think uh, the close yesterday for the month was the second highest ever monthly close for the price of gold. Uh, spot silver is at 24.50, up about six cents. High has been 24.55, the low has been 24.26. Uh, the Dow future is up 16 points, the NASDAQ is down 42, and the S&P is virtually unchanged. Uh, the FTSE is up five points, 74.66. Uh, a look at the currencies. Uh, let's check. Uh, let's check the ruble because <laughs> things are still pretty uh, volatile uh, as it pertains to the Russian currency. They they raised rates yesterday. They more than double from nine and a half to twenty, and I think the Russian economy. Yeah, it's probably not in great shape, but it's uh, hasn't collapsed. I think if the Fed raised rates to uh, ten, uh, five or ten percent, the everything would implode. So because there's so much debt, anyway, the ruble or the dollar is down about four and a half percent, and the ruble is back below, just below or around a hundred. You know, the dollar is around a hundred to the ruble. So uh, back to the. Uh, major currencies, <laughs> the uh, major debt-based debt currencies. Uh, the pound is unchanged, 134.22, the euro as well, uh, 112.20, uh, 22. Uh, the dollar is down slightly versus the yen at 114.94, and the dollar is unchanged versus the U1, 630.155. So the markets are relatively quiet so far. And don't forget, this is just before 9 a.m. London when this video is published. Things could 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 have changed. Uh, Aussie dollar, uh, Aussie dollar is up a quarter of a percent versus the dollar at 72.80. The dollar is down a tenth versus the Canadian dollar 126.60, and the Kiwi dollar is up a quarter of a percent 67.85. To the commodities, well, crude oil is picking up again. WTI crude is up 2.5%, 97.15. Uh, Brent crude is trading uh, above $100 at uh, 100.5, $100 and uh, 50 cents. The high has been just below uh, 101. High-grade copper is up 
one and three quarter percent at 453. U.S. natural gas up uh, 1.23 percent at 445. To finish off, let's look at the, the bond market. The 10-year yield is pretty steady overnight. It's uh, unchanged around 184. As you saw yesterday, there's a big drop in yields. That means that bond prices went up. The two-year yield is actually up this morning, uh, about two and a half basis points at 145. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.